Yes. How are you? Pretty good so far. Good. Tell me what's going on. Let me start by getting the engine size, okay? Okay. It's a 2015 2500x4x4 6.7 Cummings diesel. Okay. And what's going on with it? Uh, my wife is driving to work. She, uh, she lives, we live about, I'm going to say 20, just say 25 miles one way to work. And uh, she goes over a mountain, windy roads. Um, they, uh, she got over the mountain. But it do, she got halfway there to work, and the ABS light and uh, traction control, which is the car with like it says skid marks. Yeah. Which is, I believe that's traction control, right? I uh, correct. Okay. Both of those lights come on. Okay. <laughs> and, and, and she smells, she says she smells something like. Uh, like burning hydraulic fluid. The only thing I can think of is maybe brake fluid. Right, I gotcha. Okay, <clears throat> so have you have you uh, checked anything? Have you replaced anything for this? No, nothing's been done to the brakes. About a month ago, I had it. Into, I always take it to the dealership, and they did the maintenance and service always on it, and they said that it. Needs all right, so nobody has checked for codes in the computer. Yeah, you just you're just wondering what this what this could be, right? So some possible causes is basically what you're looking for. Yeah, because yeah. I mean, we keep totally up on the maintenance on this truck. It's not abused. You know, we're not no young, you know, young bucks or, or nothing. Uh, hell, we're sixty. Young. You know, we're in our sixties, okay? Yeah, I gotcha. Uh, you know, the truck is not mistreated. Right. And, and I, and always go to the dealership for all repairs, oil changes, and everything. I gotcha. Uh, the only place that touches that truck that is not a dealership is discount tires for the tires. Okay. That is it. I gotcha. Well, it's hard to say exactly what's going on, obviously, without looking at it, right? Um, what I would do as a technician, the first thing that needs to be done, somebody needs to plug into the data link connector and extract codes from the ABS computer. Um, I have a feeling there's going to be something related to one of the ABS wheel speed sensors. All right. So that could that could illuminate that ABS light and cause codes in the computer. And in some cases, if we have a, either a bad wheel bearing or a loose wheel bearing, that would it could cause, you know, kind of like either a little bit of a dragging issue. Um, it could cause... A, smoking and or a smelling condition because right you know if it's if it's a little loose it would you know the the, the friction of the wheel bearing and or the friction of the brakes that would cause it you know you it, it would give off an odor a little bit and light the light that light so the first thing that i would be looking at would be the wheel bearings and checking for codes looking at the abs wheel speed sensors um you know stuff like that those are very very common on this particular vehicle so that's what i would be be checking next not safe to drive with, is it? <laughs> yeah i'd be kind of careful i wouldn't i would probably only drive it to a shop if anything um you know because we don't know if, if there was a wheel bearing that's starting to you know like go bad to the point where right. it's loose yeah. so i yeah i would be i would get it to a shop as soon as possible okay all right, see, today's now Saturday, so yeah, I'll just have to have it towed into the dealership. Traction control, the button on, on the Dodge, Yeah. you can turn it on and off, mm -hmm. or, or, right? Correct, right. Uh, oh, okay, because uh, the road that we travel, I, take, I turn the traction control off. Um, I want to be able to control my vehicle. Uh, something goes on. Like I said, we live in a rural area, windy roads. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't need the, I don't need the, the so-called safety factors that will do more damage to me than me controlling my own vehicle, knowing what I need to do. Right. Exactly. And, and being a, uh, now we so we always shut that off. Mm hmm. Uh, that one create no problem, would it? No. Mm -mm. Nope. 
I didn't think so. I just had to ask on that. All right, well, I'll just get it towed into the dealership then. There you go. I think that's going to be your best bet. And then if something comes up, if, if they give you some some runaround or some answer that doesn't make any sense, if they quote you some insane amount of, you know, um, price to re replace, you know, just maybe a simple sensor or anything like that, you can always reply back online. Let me know what they say. And I can tell you if at least sounds, you know, <laughs> like you're, they're headed in the right direction or if, if it sounds like, you know, I would, you know, recommend a different dealer. But for the most part, you should be in good hands because they should be able to, you know, at least point you in the right direction, right? So, but what you could always ask too, if the conversation's going that way, when when you get into the dealership, ask them for the codes in the computer because that's what I'm going to ask you or any any technician's going to ask you, you know, hey, this is what happened to the vehicle. What do you think's wrong with it? And what they're going to ask you, their next, next question is going to be, well, what codes are in the computer? So there could be one, there could be multiple codes. So make sure you write all that stuff down and usually they'll put it on the invoice, but um, they can they should be able to tell you that stuff over the phone. I will do that, Jen. Any other questions while we're on the phone, my friend? Uh, no, everything, I, I appreciate you giving me a holler. You've answered my, all my questions. And uh, I kind of figured that's what I would, what you told me is kind of what I was expecting. Right. Mm. And I'm not surprised. And how long do you say you had, you've had the vehicle? I bought it brand new. Okay. All right. Brand new from the dealership in 2015. And, and like I said, it's always any, anything mechanical, oil change, lifetime oil change. Everything is done at the dealership except the tires. Right. And I, and I do that because, I just, you know, hell, I'm 62 years old. I've been disabled since 20, uh, for the past eight years. So, you know, I, I've got a, and my wife, we're both basically the same age. So mm -hmm. it, it's nice. That it's not that we go out there, we don't hot ride it. We don't do four wheeling. Right. But towing days are totally totally gone um so it, it, it's 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 something that i have you know right i, I got some now right you know so we do take care of it right like i said everything that i just i took it into the dealership and they did those seals that kind of pissed me off because i think i only got a hundred and my thinking oh man i just asked my wife I think it was like a hundred. I want to say a hundred and twenty something. Just say a hundred thirty thousand okay. miles on the truck, and really, that's good. Right. And, and, they're, and they're trying to tell me I got rear main seals slightly leaking. I'm old school mechanic, so you know this new stuff is all yeah foreign to me. Right. Um, and I was put in a situation where I can't. I can't do nothing. Right. I'm, I'm, dis I'm disabled. I got so you. I have to rely on, on the honesty of other people. And, and I've always had the dealership. That's why I've always gone there. But this time, to put you this way, it cost me thirty eight hundred dollars. Oh wow! And that's exactly what I said. Mm -hmm. You know, diesel truck. It's not abused. Uh, my daughter's got a. Uh, 2017 gas uh, 1500 4x4 four and they drive the living hell out of it and I know there's a big difference between gas and diesel but still mm -hmm. you know no, no training leaks you know no rear main leaks and it's like wait a minute man you know I pamper you know, I take care of my truck I pamper it mm-hmm yeah, but a lot of people they, they get they get confused when just because they take care of the vehicle they assume that it's not going to break down and that's just not the case, you know. Yeah, no, I, I realize that. Yeah, you know, I, I talk to a lot of people on the phone. They're like, "Man, you can eat off this engine," <clears throat> and you know, so sensors go bad. Whether whether you know you, you keep take care you, you take care of the vehicle, um, you know, things do break down. Wheel bearings go bad. I mean, that's just that's just what happens. But um, yeah. but I can. No, I, I, I understand that. 
<clears throat> but it, it sounds like it's, it's going to be something fairly straightforward. Maybe the ABS module itself could go bad. You could always check the fuses just to make sure that, you know, nothing simple is overlooked, but, um, you know, I think it's best if it just, just goes to the dealership. Those guys take a look at it, plug in, check for codes in the, in the computer system and go from there. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm, I wish I can remember what the hell the recall was. Something to do with programming or something. Oh yeah. I might need a reflash. That's pretty common. Yeah. All right. Well, I thank you so very much. And I hope you were already awake, man. <laughs> yeah, no, we're good. <laughs> no, I appreciate it. <laughs> It's, I do appreciate all the information. You bet, my friend. It's been a pleasure chatting with you. Good luck, and let us know if anything comes up, okay? Thank you very much, and you have a good weekend. All right. Thanks a lot. You too. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.